Hello there. Uh, I am the Sauce Chef. Welcome to the Quest. And today, if you haven't guessed by all this kind of incredible ingredients in front of you here, we're going to be talking about absinthe. It's making a major comeback. And I'm going to show you three ways of preparing absinthe and show you how to work with the absinthe ritual. You're probably wondering what the hell this stuff is. Basically, it is a, a drink that's been around for almost 200 years. It's kind of this like drug of choice that is getting popular again. Uh, it's as much delicious as it is complicated to prepare, but that's part of the fun and it's part of the ritual. Uh, and the reason why absinthe was illegal in the United States is because of, of its, um, it's made with wormwood. Wormwood is something that supposedly has psychedelic properties, but it was never proven and it kind of was, you know, the temperance moving back in the 30s and 40s, it was like absinthe with this big, almost like drug, but it's not that bad. And basically, when you prepare it right, it's going to be delicious, and you don't have to worry about hallucinating unless you drink this whole fucking bottle. Absinthe is also known as a green fairy. It's a cool, it's a cool little nickname. And one of the things that make, makes absinthe a little different than all these other liquors is that it's almost, the preparation is almost like a social interaction. You kind of sit around, you watch this like water drip on the sugar cube, and it makes this mixture called the louche, which is very interesting. And when you talk about absinthe in the drink, it's the only actual liquor where you actually talk about the dose of absinthe. Okay, let me show you what we got going on here, cameraman Tom. Okay, um, that's the absinthe. This is a sugar cube. Mm -hmm. These are the two glasses we're going to use to prepare it in. This is an absinthe spoon. They, all these look, these things look different in any like any type of uh, store you can buy them. But the most important thing is they got the holes in them. That's it. That's basically it. Over here is a big bottle, a big pitcher of ice water, which some people use, but I'm going to show you a different way today, okay? Now this shit over here, these three things you never will see in absinthe preparation. This is a Saw Chef take on what we have going on here. I think in my, in my special absinthe drink, I'm going to add a little cream soda. It's going to cut a little of that flavor. If somebody in the 1800s saw me do this, they'd probably shoot me and slap me in the fucking balls. So, that's interesting. This... This is, possibly in that order, this is papaya that I actually have rehydrated with absinthe. I don't know why I chose papaya, it just was there and I, I thought it had a nice color. It's actually really delicious and it tastes like doing a shot of absinthe when you do it. Okay, this third thing here. Cameron and Tom, Tom is one of my best friends. Tom, what is this? That is a uh, baby bottle with Dr. Brown's high quality uh, with a level 3 nipple attached to it. It's a level 3 nipple. I personally prefer like level 2 nipples, but level 3 nipples are also really good. The reason why I have this thing right here is because the biggest thing when you're doing absinthe, and you'll see this in a little bit, is the slowness of the water hitting the sugar cube. And if I was to use this pitcher and try to pour it down in this steady stream, I would totally ruin it. So the reason why I'm using a baby bottle is because it's going to control basically the, the, the pressure of the water coming out. Tom, what the hell do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that thing just looks kind of stupid. I don't know. It looks really fucking dumb, but here's the thing. It actually serves a purpose. See these little grooves here? When you put it down, I don't know if you can get this, when you put it down on the glass, um, when you put the sugar on, these grooves actually help the sugar as it melts to kind of not all go down one hole. And if you're caramelizing it, it actually holds some of the flame up here. The second thing, it's got this little groove thing on here, so if you're moving the cup around, you're doing stuff. Look at that. It doesn't fall in. For the traditional method, we're going to take the absinthe, we're going to do a two ounce pour. We're going to fill up your jigger. Thanks for donating your jigger, Tom. That's my jigger. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually pour this over the sugar as we're adding it into the glass. Cool. Alright, so what we're going to do is we take this bottle right here. You can just get a steady stream. What's going to happen here is as the sugar dissolves, it's going to make something called the louche. Uh, it's a very, very uh, absinthe term. And what that means is the sugar is going to dissolve. It's actually going to make that liquid down at the bottom look very milky. Look, now you look at it. You see? You see how it's starting to turn a little bit milky down there? See that? This is the milky white color that we're looking for when we do our absinthe. This is pretty much done. Oh my god, it's like Easter Sunday. And I just opened a fresh bag of Brock's Be jelly beans. Wow. All black. I'm picturing that image. 
you guys ever drink absinthe on Easter? No. Wow. That is different. Um, my first thought is Jägermeister, but it's not really Jägermeister, but I guess they're kind of similar, right? Yeah. It's great. It's, uh, I think it's just the right mix. You, you taste the sugar in there? Mm-hmm. This is why I love my job, people. Oh, and I, I think that's perfect. If you're making this at home, it doesn't matter. You can add and adjust the water. You can do a 3 to 1 ratio. You can do a 2 to 1 ratio. You can do whatever you want to. Make this shit taste good because it's delicious. The second method involves a lighter, okay? Now, traditional absinthe people, when they see this, they say, fuck you because th this is not traditional, okay? But here's the thing. We're not traditional here, and I always like to experiment. So what we're going to do is we're going to caramelize this thing. Make sure you know how to use your lighter. Get that flame going. Put it right in that cube. And try to get this fucker caught on fire. See those blue flames? I do. Watch them go. Oh, it's sizzling. It is sizzling. Let's see that sugar dripping down there. Don't burn the camera. So it, we're going to let this basically go out. What you did? What you did. You can smell that. Obviously, you can't at home smell this, but you definitely can smell the burnt sugar with the absinthe. Then you can take your bottle. Same thing? Same thing. Basically, the process is the same from here, except the New Age absinthe people say that this adds a better, more kind of a roasty flavor to the absinthe. We're going to try this out. I think they're both delicious. I don't know what's better, but we will tell you. It is it's definitely good. I'll be, I'll be quite honest with you. I don't know if I can taste the difference between the two, but I am only one opinion. That's the same fucking shit. Traditional, non-traditional. To me, it tastes fucking same. However, a suggestion I can make for you at home. This sugar cube here, that is the key. And when you take your lighter to it, maybe it's when the flame goes out, put the torch to it again and try to get a little more caramelization. Don't burn it, but that may, may add a little more flavor and may make these two taste a little different. So I have this guy, my buddy, his name is Barnaby. I call him Barney for short. He fucking hates absinthe. But I tricked him into actually drinking this using my sauced chef method, which is not traditional at all. This is something I'm going to do that is you're not going to see anywhere else. So basically, these right here, these are papayas that I actually rehydrated in absinthe. So they're very potent. They're actually like taking a shot of absinthe. So we're going to take some of these, just as garnish. We're just going to pop them in there, okay? That should take. It's a couple ice cubes, okay? Now, believe it or not, black licorice, the flavor profile goes very nice with like a, a very mellow vanilla flavor. So I'm gonna take this Jones cream soda here. Whoa. All right. Just gonna add a little bit here. Mellow out that black licorice flavor. Stir it up. Delicious. If you are interested in my unique Sauce Chef version of this, it's on my blog, including how to uh, rehydrate papayas. Oscar Wilde, Van Gogh, the Sauce Chef. Great artists, great consumers of absinthe. I've learned a lot about absinthe today. I hope you have too. See you next time.